Okay, this is a long question. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm going to try to read it, but you know, it's going to be on the screen in case that you want to read every single piece of detail in there. I'm going to summarize the question after I read it. So the question is, have you found uh, bald patients, somebody without hair, similar to me, <laughs> experiencing more pain on neural navigation TMS machines where there isn't um, a swimming cap or a swim cap on the patient's heads to act as a buffer between the coil and the skull? Okay, so you know, just you know, uh, to, to kind of bring you to the, the uh, picture of this question, um, some TMS machines use a swim cap, you know, basically a cap on the head, uh, similar to what you would wear to protect your hair when you're swimming and what have you. And um, we mark the landmark of where we're going to stimulate on that cap so we don't draw on the patient head we draw on the cap and then we can take this cap put it on the side in a specific drawer for this particular patient the next day when they come in we put the cap back on and then we put the coil where it needs to be so that's the old way of doing 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 uh, or marking where the target is if you have navigation system like we do here at florida tms clinic then we we use the 3d camera to point exactly to where the treatment call needs to be so that's what what he's saying about or uh, I'm, I'm assuming he because of the boldness but boldness could happen in females as well but anyways he's saying that swim cap you know does have some thickness in it right you know it's similar to you know some of our patients uh, who have thick hair, uh, particularly African American, uh, you know, sorry, African American patients who do have a curly thick hair, they will have distance, you know, between where their skull will start and where the coil is, no matter how much pressure you, you put. Another patient population are, are uh, Muslim females uh, who do wear hijab, um, and they keep wearing their hijab during the treatment, and then there is some thickness of a tissue, um, you know, that, that this hijab, you know, would, would uh, add to uh, the thickness of the, 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 the skull. All right. So he's saying, halfway through ITPS, which is intermittent theta burst stimulation, 50 hertz left the LPFC treatment. I was at 90% of MT on Nextem. Nextem is one of those neural navigation machines. Um, and no cap, you know, obviously because it uses a 3D camera, so you don't need the old school way of doing it. You know, you just you just follow what the camera is telling you where to put the coil. And then the next day, switch to McVenture. So McVenture is another manufacturer of TMS. That one you can actually add navigation system if you want to, but it's an add-on piece to it. You know, the one from Nextem was made for neurosurgeons to start with as a neural navigation TMS um, anyway, so it doesn't have a component where it would work without the navigation. Um, anyways, and he's saying on McVenture at 120% of MT, so they actually treated him at a higher dose. You know, we have to remember this is a higher dose for the patient because they, I'm assuming that they checked his MT again at McVenture device. There will be a question that will come up next that will, will explain that idea that I'm trying to explain in here. So let's say this is a patient who did their mapping on Nextem machine and they were treated at 90, 95% of their MT on that particular machine. They took him out of this machine because of the headache. They put him on McVenture instead. On McVenture, they checked his MT and now they're treating him at 120% of MT, but he's tolerating things fine. He's not having headaches. So despite the 25% dosage increase within a day of, uh, on, on McVenture, it was much less painful the next time. They redid the uh, sorry. They redid the mapping when switching machines. Okay, excellent. That's what I wanted in there. Could the cap on the head be reducing the magnetic field by creating a gap between the coil and the skull? Okay. Thus, um, I am actually getting a lower dosage. Okay, so he's saying, you know, because of this distance, so I'm getting lower dosage. So let me answer this. No, that is not the case because when they mapped you, they also had the cap on your head. So the dosage was accounted for in both situations. I'm assuming that they still had the cap on your head, you know, between the mapping and when they did the actual treatment. That's what we would do, you know, because they need to mark things on that cap. So you wore the cap, they did the MT, you moved your thumb, that same distance is still existent when they're treating you. Okay, so, you know, that, that out of the way, no, that's not the case, all right? Or could it be the slight variation in mapping that changes the pain? It's possible because our nerve ending could change as where we're putting the coil. And we could hit a nerve or an, an, a nerve ending in an area of the skull that could be too irritating. And when you remap somewhere else, that irritation might be less as you're repositioning the coil. So that is a possibility, okay? All right. Uh, creating a gap between this as I'm getting, or is it a variation in the shortness? Or it's a significant difference within one day. You know, he's saying that I, it, it could not be that I just got used to it, you know, because it was like one day, the second day they switched me and I'm not having pain anymore, you know, so, you know, th that is not tolerating the headache kind of situation. I know pain is supposed to reduce over time, but it is a drastic change within one day. The pain on next time would vary widely depending on whether my head was touching the coil or if it is one to two millimeters air gap. Um, it was very touchy. Okay, all right. Okay, so he's kind of re-emphasizing the thought that maybe it's the distance between where my scalp is and where, where the coil is, and that's why it was causing pain. All right, so let's start with the first thing is that when we're mapping, we're making contact between the mapping coil and your scalp scalp okay when we're treating we have to make contact as well because otherwise there will be variation not knowing you know how much intensity we're actually delivering to the brain so contact is a must you know whether you know uh, with with McVenture or next to it doesn't matter now that thickness you were talking about it is accounted for when they remapped you at McVenture so the best answer to this question is most likely your headache varied between one machine to the other because of the of the 
pulse width okay so pulse width what is that so when the machine is giving those click 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 kind of thing you know each of those pulses has duration for how long does it take to deliver that intensity that we're delivering some machines have narrower pulse width than other machines that change in the pulse width could change the side effect of a headache. There have been a couple of papers that looked at that. The problem though is that one of those two papers was claiming that the, the wider the, the pulse width is, the more headache that will happen. The other one said the opposite. It said that this, the, the shorter the pulse width is, the more headache that could happen, okay? So what could we conclude from that? At least there is a variability in at least the side effect that happens with TMS based on the, on the pulse width. So uh, yeah, so that, that, that probably is, is the reason why you're having different different experience with headache you know, between the two, the two machines. Um, hopefully this answers your question. By the way, there is a possibility of the location itself, as I told you, but I'm assuming that all factors are equal. Like if we map you with you know, a, a beam method way, you know, which is not 5.5 centimeters or not based on the structural MRI because Nextem uses a structural MRI targeting to decide where you're going to be treated, while McVenture um, uh, you know, depending on whether they use 5.5 centimeters rule or they use beam, beam 3 method to kind of decide where the DLPFC is. So those three spots could be different from each other. And that could mean that they did not hit, you know, that nerve that was kind of sensitive, you know, during the treatment. But let's assume that we use the same methodology of mapping, you know, on both machines and you're still having different experience with headache. It's most likely because of the pulse width. Okay. Well, hopefully I'll have time in the future to kind of give more details, more detailed overview about that pulse width, you know, in TMS, but that would be for future projects. Disclaimer. Although I am a psychiatrist, this is not a professional advice as I am not familiar with the specifics of your unique situation. Please contact a psychiatrist in your area with more questions. This disclaimer is added to my answers on social media after consulting with the American Psychiatric Association. Thank you.